name is Susie Misla. I'm a Prince George's County resident, library worker, and UFCW local 1994 union member. I have some questions for you to consider on closing libraries. What does it cost to close a library? How much more library service will we lose because the library system must absorb these added costs at a time of substantial funding cuts? What happens to the books and equipment in the closing branch libraries? Where does it go? Does the library system have space available? If not, how much does new space cost? How will the books and equipment be moved? How much will it cost to move? Will the small remaining library staff carry books and equipment from place to place rather than as library staff serving the public? Please do not forget these details. They're important. And then, what happens to the buildings? Will the library system and the county walk away from them? If not, what does it cost to pay for maintenance? There's utilities, grass cutting, plywood for broken windows. Is the plan to divert the lim library's limited remaining resources away from serving the public into maintaining empty buildings? Is that an effective use of our tax money? Another question, what happens to the children who use the libraries? Do they stop studying, writing school papers, and preparing school science projects because they can no longer do research in the libraries? There are many residents, children, who rely on the library to complete their homework. Evenings, Sunday afternoons, every day. If a library closes, what cost to the county's educational goals? And what about the children who go to the library after school because they have no adult at home? What is the cost in added police supervision and additional social services? Mr. Baker, additional cuts to the library budget could lead to the closing of libraries. At what cost? Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Fred Sisson. Fred Sisson. Melanie Sproul. Um, good afternoon. Um, thank you for having me once again, Executive uh, Baker, and along with your panel. And I know what I'm about to say will not be popular, but I'm, I come here because I want the, the community to help ourselves. And saying that is sometimes we just cannot wait for the government to write us a check. Um, my son's school has probably over 500 students. I see the kids with the latest video games and telephones and all these, these things. I'm thinking, imagine if every parent donated $500 a year to that school to where we can build our own science lab and computer lab. And also, um, we can also provide more support services, which I heard the young lady say how she, she dropped out and how now the services that was provided helped her. Um, Another thing is, um, as far as STEM, I didn't wait for someone to come in. Um, I asked, I went out and I asked a organization called Club Scientific to help us with our STEM program. And now Club Scientific, they come in and they teach kids, they teach kids how to video design and the, the Lego, um, what, you know, the Lego thing and, and how to work on the computers. Um, and they, and people told me that that wouldn't work. And it did, parents signed up for it. They paid $225 for that. Um, also, I'm glad to see the librarians here. I would like to see more partnerships with the, the local schools and the library to when they're doing their um, literature uh, curriculum, 
that you would have to use the services at the local library. And you can pay a little fee, which would, I don't know how much, because I haven't done the math, um, but that would create a partnership. It would also bring in some funds because the parents have to pay a fee to access that the material that the teacher is assigned. I would like to see the schools work with our local libraries as well. Um, I do have some other stuff, but I won't go into it. Um, but I would love to send you um, a spreadsheet of exactly what I'm saying to it would break down as far as money lies. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, you can. Yes, you can submit your ideas to our um, Office of Budget and Management. Yes. No, I said you can. Great. Amy Pruskinski. Good evening, County Executive Baker. Thank you for coming to Laurel tonight. Good evening. My name is Amy Progoski, and I've been a homeowner in this county and city for 13 years, and I'm a longtime volunteer at the County Animal Shelter. I can appreciate the county's budget woes, as every person and every household faces some financial troubles in their lives, and we have to make a dollar stretch farther. However, I am disappointed and honestly quite angry at some past examples of poor financial stewardship that the county has committed. Years ago, when nonprofit animal welfare contractors ran the shelter, the county paid them good money, and a lot of it, and there were many complaints about the level of care that the animals received. When the longtime contractor left in 2008, they left with over $900,000. When the next contractor left after just one year, they walked away with $290,000. That's over a million dollars total. You can look at it as gross overpayments or as money that was not spent where it should have been on the animals. Either way, somebody wasn't paying attention and let it happen year after year after year. I have brought this issue up to many levels of the government many times over the years, to people in your administration and to the previous con county executive's administration, and never got a satisfactory answer as to who dropped the ball on this and how is the county making sure it doesn't happen again. I understand that you weren't here in 2009, but you have to acknowledge the that many people in the government today were here when this was happening. They knew about it and chose to do nothing. As an ironic twist to the story, the long-term animal welfare group has subsequently transferred some of those pocketed funds to another nonprofit animal group who has then sued the county in recent years, taking up your time and our tax dollars. Before inducing panic in residents that there will be cuts to public safety and education, please first guarantee us that there aren't other poorly managed contracts out there sucking up our precious tax dollars. We have to trust you with our money, so please don't disappoint us. And please don't forget the homeless animals in your care. The last time I came to one of these forums was two years ago, and at that time I asked you that I knew animals weren't your number one priority, and I completely understand that, but I asked that they not even be, that they don't be your last priority. Um, and when I got the handout today, here's your priorities. The animals and the euthanasia rate isn't on here, and I hope that you haven't forgotten about them. Thank you for your time. I can assure you Adam Ortiz has not. Hi. Hello. I come to speak against cutting any of the library's budget. Our library system should be recognized as the shining star it is in the county that is often recognized only for its negatives. I speak both personally and professionally. First professionally, as a clinical social worker most often working with people who are financially or below poverty level. I, I point to the library as a place where they can borrow books for free that they otherwise couldn't afford, learn computer skills, and get information resources that may lead to better health, better communication skills, and better job skills. And if we don't have a resource in this county, we can always access with an interlibrary loan any almost anything we need. When you're poor, Having access to books, films, music, and publications is priceless, and it is for us priceless. The library is a model of inclusiveness and equality in action. All you need is an address and you get millions of free resources. At the same time, the library serves many specialized groups. For some individuals with addiction issues, there's an abundance of self-help and recovery books and recordings. 
did you know that Overeaters Anonymous was able to distribute information through the library system as a resource for compulsive eaters? I have watched people grow where they gingerly get on the computer for the first time and you see them years later and they are whizzes at the internet. People who are not native English speakers borrow DVDs and learn English. Uh, I've been working predominantly with seniors for the past few years. Did you know that on March 10th there's a brain stimulating activity sponsored by the Largo branch, which actually helps um, push off dementia? Um, leads to have at later time. In writing this, I discovered something new. 34 specialized databases and listservs that suggest books to read or listen to. I am also on the board of the Prince George's County Historical Society. We are located on the first floor of the Greenbelt Library. Every year, we, op we are open there. More and more people come to access our records, our hard, co hard copies, of so much of this county's history. Personally, I have used the library to borrow books and so much more. I understand how my ADHD works in my life, but so much better for having read the books and magazines of the Greenbelt branch. I can learn to be healthier, I can buy a new phone and be sure that the library will have a simple book that will explain the apps and widgets on my phone. Um, it's brutal enough when the, when the library started being closed on Sunday, but to shorten the hours or have less staff will be terrible. And the last thing I want to say is I access, I access the library so often that I have memorized my number. <laughs>